Hello, I'm Jorge Gestoso. Welcome to a new program. On today's show, who won and who lost on the new immigration agreement between Mexico and the United States. Our guest, Hector Sanchez, executive director of LACLA and senior fellow of the George Washington University Cisneros Institute. Hector Sanchez, a warm welcome for the program. Thanks for the invitation, Jorge. In recent days, because the issue here is immigration, and in, in recent days in the New York Times was published an article, it says, why should immigrants respect our borders? The West never respected theirs. Immigration quota should be based on how much the host country has ruined other countries. Today, a quarter billion people are migrants. They're moving because the rich countries have stolen the future of the poor countries. For example, Guatemalans and Hondurans are trying to get into the United States, the country that peddles them guns and buys the drugs. They're coming here because we were there. Is that real, the base of the issue here? No doubt. And it's important to analyze this from a more holistic perspective, Jorge. Usually the way immigration has been analyzed in the nation, in the United States, is we blame neighboring nations for the issue of immigration, and we blame immigrants for the issue of immigration. I've been working on this issue for a while, and for the last 15 years, I say we need to look at the root causes of immigration, and it's exactly what you're mentioning. Everything that we do in the world, in a global economy, in a global space, in the space of globalization, has implication and is connected to everything that happens. On the issue of immigration, we need to look at it from a different perspective. In the root causes of immigration, first of all, on the economy. We have entire sectors of the economy in the United States that depend on documented workers. Look at farming and agriculture. Almost 50% of all of the workers are undocumented. Look at the services, look at the hotels, look at the restaurants, look at the... Construction. Uh, look at gardeners, look at construction, look at the meatpacking industries. It's a perfect system of exploitation, Jorge, because you have the workers in these spaces and they have no labor rights, and they can be easily uh, deported. So for the enforcement only policies on immigration, make it so easy for them to be exploited and be deported to the countries of origin. So what we're saying is if we need these workers, we need to make sure that there is a system of inclusion. There are workers that have been here and contributing to the economy for years and even decades. They have families, they have roots in the country, and it's fair to do it. We have polls uh, that show that people in the nation want immigration reform. We have uh, studies from the right and the left. Even the Cato Institute show the benefits of having immigration reform, uh, billions and billions uh, of benefits uh, of including these undocumented workers into the system. But still, instead of moving in that direction, we have the most extremist president in the history of this nation saying no to immigrants, attacking immigrants, attacking Latinos, attacking everything that represents what we are, and attacking our neighbors. That is a horrible problem when it comes to bilateral relations and regional relations, uh, not only on trade, but on all the different issues that we collaborate on. And the same article uh, that I was mentioning to you that has been written by Suketa Meta suggests that to avoid what he calls the immigration tax, he says the rich countries would have to restrain their multinational corporations from ripping off the natural resources wealth of poor countries and make sure that global trade is more equitable. Or else, he said, the migration bill from the devastated country would be prohibitive. Because of unfair trade and because of going and ripping off the natural resources of, for example, Latin American countries, the U.S. ends ending up with people in their borders trying to get a survival? Yeah, no doubt the environmental element is another case in which we can analyze uh, the impact that it's having in neighboring countries. The environmental devastation of entire communities and regions in Mexico and Central America is really pushing people out of their land, out of their uh, spaces and they have to migrate to other spaces if there are no possibilities in the cities. And the North is saying, we need you. Obviously, this is going to happen, those migration patterns. 
But the environmental point of view is one of the saddest things that I have to deal with because we have seen all the research, we have seen all the signs, we have seen all the different elements, and we have seen the oceans being so contaminated. When are we going to say enough, Jorge? When are we going to take this issue seriously? Uh, from, but from this perspective also, we can connect it to the trade agreements. Let's just take NAFTA that is on the table right now. Uh, 25 years of uh, an examples of the impact that it has. Uh, there were a couple of really good things, but we can analyze the issue of immigration. As soon as NAFTA was implemented, there was a drastic increase on immigration to the north. It devastated the countryside because uh, NAFTA said you have to remove the subsidies to Mexican farm workers. Meanwhile, the United States has some of the biggest subsidies in the world when it comes to uh, uh, this particular area. So what are farmers going to do if it's easier for you to buy corn in Mexico that comes from the United States than the one you can uh, plan for your own consumption and, and, and production? You cannot even sell it. So it's some of the basic elements of economics. And at the same time for us, now that the negotiations are on the table, labor rights are so critical for the workers in those uh, nations, but also in the United States. Everybody loves from this perspective while well, the accumulation of, weights keep, uh, accumulation of wealth keeps moving in one direction and is the biggest accumulation of wealth in the history of the country. Do you remember the civil rights activist Malcolm X who has a famous phrase and he said, the media is the most potent entity in the world because it's able to make the guilty innocent and the innocent guilty and that's power because it manipulates the minds of the masses how much the media is playing in this scenario where the immigrants, as they say, they are coming here because we were there to devastate their countries, how much the rhetoric is being changed to paint the victims <laughs> as guilty and the guilty are victims. Are they an arm of the corporations, an arm of the government, and they're not painting reality as it is? On the issue of immigration, the media in the nation has played a horrible, uh, it has done a horrible job. Even the progressive spaces, uh, there has to be a lot of work to educate them on the basics. How do you call a human being a legal alien? Is the humanizing? And, and it's your neighbor also, your neighbor. <laughs> neighbor that lives next door. And if you look at the coverage in the media of immigration, everybody's a criminal, everybody's jumping the fence, everybody has guns. So is this portrait Rapists. of immigrants, just like this president has been saying, criminals, rapists coming here to steal jobs. We have done a lot of work as, a, a, as organizations and as, as, as advocates really showing the benefits of immigration reform. I mean, the, of, of, that immigrants bring to the nation. Um, immigrants in general have less criminal rates than a middle class white household. Immigrants uh, create jobs. Immigrants pay taxes. And not only pay taxes, immigrants are subsidizing uh, the social security for the nation because they cannot take those benefits because um, there are limitations, they're undocumented. So there are a lot of things that the media has played a role and we have been very critical of this uh, element. But also, uh, the nation, Jorge, let's take, uh, I have no doubt that immigrants make and have made the American dream that everybody talks about a reality. I turn this around and I ask people when they're so critical of immigrants, what have you done to change this perspective? Because you are benefiting and your American dream is a reality thanks to these people that are working hard to make it a reality. I ask them, why are we doing the labor movement? If you don't want immigrants, boycott. Boycott any vegetable that has been touched by immigrant house. Boycott buying houses that have been built with immigrant hands. Boycott driving on roads that have been built with immigrant hands. Then they will know how critical immigrants are for the economy in the nation. We have a lot of examples. After a, one law was passed in Alabama, HB 56, one of the most anti-immigrant pieces of legislation that we have seen in the nation, 
uh, the fruits and the vegetables were rotting because immigrants moved to neighboring states to work. And they were trying to get people to do this work and nobody wanted to apply, to, uh, apply for those jobs with those conditions and those wages. So we need to make sure that if we as a nation need these immigrants, that we have a system of inclusion, that we welcome them in our communities, that we offer a system of legalization. This president says you have to wait in line. There is no line, Jorge. There is no line for these workers to, to be included into the legalization process. And that's why for us immigration reform is so important. That's why for us what happened last week in Congress, which was an initial step to legalize DREAMers, TPS workers, etc. Those are a, a steps that we need to move uh, forward in order to make sure that we respect these workers and we do what is right as a nation. Who won and who lost in this new agreement regarding immigration between Mexico and the U.S.? Everybody loses. Uh, the U.S. consumer lost immediately after that tweet because the tariffs, Tr Trump tweet. when Trump tweeted that, immediately affected the market in the United States. And somebody needs to tell this president the basics of economics and the level of ignorance that we witness on you know, his daily tweets is, is, is just embarrassing. The, so the American consumer immediately lost because of the tariffs, because it was affected. Uh, obviously, Mexico lost because these uh, threats uh, are an element of instability with the most important ally that we have. Mexico historically has been a, a critical ally to provide stability during the World War I and II, to provide labor, to provide raw materials. Uh, it's just a historical flame. And instead, this president decides to bully Mexico and bully Mexicans. It's unacceptable. How would you assess the relationship between President Trump and President Andrés Manuel López Obrador? It's hard to assess any relationship with President Trump. We have seen this just breaking relationships with uh, friends all over the nation. He's somebody that is unstable, is a threat to our national security, is a threat to our democracy. And now on the other hand, I always welcome uh, possibilities to work with any new president, Mexican myself, uh, have the citizenship from both sides, and I always want to make sure that we have the best possible relationship and that we push policies that are good for workers here and workers there. So I'm hopeful that uh, we can have a better relationship. In terms of the negotiations, Jorge, who can negotiate with this president? What they agree on is something that was already agreed on in December. I personally believe that Mexico needs to be a partner to our Central American brothers and sisters and not fall into the threats of this uh, uh, almost dictator <laughs> uh, that every morning wakes up trying to implement different policies and attacks and threats. Let's remember it's not the first time that we have seen something like this. He cut the aid to Central America. I mean, Central America needs a Marshall Plan to stabilize those economies, and instead he's cutting basic uh, aid that the U.S. was offering to Central America. He also threatened to close the U.S.-Mexico border, 2,000 miles of commerce, collaboration, trade, culture, and cities that are together. I live in uh, El Paso with Juarez. I can see how those cities interact, and he's mm -hmm. trying to close the border. And now the last uh, tantrum that we have seen from this president is the issue of the tariffs. And talking about the tariffs, even if it has been avoided that in this week tariffs will take place, he mentions that he will keep an eye on how Mexico is performing, and if not, in 90 days they're going to get together, and probably he left the door open to re at least re-threaten uh, <laughs> with tariffs. So nothing is really written on stone. And that's why I say that everybody loses with negotiating with this president. Because even if you agree to what was agreed on last week, he can come back and say, I changed my mind today and I tweet to something different. How do you hold your best ally, your next neighbor, accountable by threats uh, on an issue that you as a nation literally created? Uh, again, going back to the elements of interventionism, uh, in Latin America that destabilize democracies that supported dictators, it has an element of instability. And all the issue of drugs, Jorge, 
we, the United States, are the most uh, the nation that consumes the most drugs in the in the world. 25 percent of all the drugs that are in the world in Mexico and Central America are providing those drugs. That creates instability. All the guns that they have come from the United States, so we can keep going on and on. But we need to make sure that this messaging is heard, because otherwise we're just going to continue with punitive measures that are not helpful for our neighbors, that are not helping move a binational agenda forward or an agenda with the region forward. So this is the wrong way to approach uh, working with neighbors. It lacks all basic elements of di diplomacy. It lacks all the basic elements of rational approach to economics. Uh, it, it, it just, uh, it's just very difficult to, to move in a bipartisan And you were mentioning drugs, and, and we go back to the same, the same way media is playing favorably in order to create that image that uh, people in this country are victims. They are victims, quote unquote, of migrants, even though that in the article of the New York Times they say they are coming here because we were there. In terms of drugs, uh, you're mentioning 25% of the world consumption. In terms of cocaine, we're talking about 5% of the world population, the U.S. approximately, consumes 50% of the cocaine of the planet. So here the problem is not that we Americans are the most or one of the most drug addicts in this planet. The problem is that we are victims of these awful people from Latin America there that comes to poison our children. We are, we are not drug addicts. They are the boogeymen. The migrants are coming to uh, fill our schools, our hospitals, rob our jobs. We have nothing to do with nothing. It's amazing the way that things are presented. So if you are an American, you sleep very well because we are being protected by Donald Trump from those attacks. <laughs> from, because Donald Trump is saying that building a wall or now with new laws or agreements, he's protecting the Americans of the drug traffickers. It's not the problem that he should fix that is the drug consumption. Drug consumption is not in the, in the, in the, in the issue. What is going wrong to paint reality in such a way that is so different from what it really is. And it's so critical, and the messaging is so important. It's so important that we need to have a level of empathy, a level of understanding, a level of just basic facts that are reality, because otherwise we're gonna continue with this kind of messaging. As an immigrant, Jorge, I thought about so much about what it means to be an immigrant. I love to be able to be included in this nation, to be a US citizen. And that's why constantly I try to make sure that we are a better democracy. There is something unique about the spark that immigrants bring to a nation. And I have no doubt that that's why this nation, it is what it is because of the historical contribution of immigrants. What Donald Trump is saying, uh, we can criticize him, but he repeats nonstop, the economy is doing great. Why not to celebrate that According to him, the economy is doing great. Is it doing great? We need to understand, again, how the economy works in economic fluctuations, uh, and, and understand that uh, after the biggest recession in 2008, Obama implemented some uh, economic policies that we can still see today. What we have witnessed from Trump is just uh, benefits like the tax cuts, benefits that go to the corporation and the 1%. But not the work. Are affecting the workers. We have seen uh, a stagnation of minimum wages. We have seen the worst concentration of wealth in the history of this nation. We have seen that it's impossible to have a decent life today. Over here, if you have a minimum wage, just one job, you have to have two or three to afford the basics. So this is heading in the bad direction, and, and we're very worried about that. You are starting a new stage in your career which is uh, at the George Washington University. Tell us about it. Very excited. Uh, I've been very critical about some of the issues of this president, but there is something unique, and is the importance of democracy and the democratic values, and civic participation is at the center of that. I have a class now that is going to give, uh, encourage students in the nation, particularly in George Washington. George Washington here in Washington, D.C. 
to activate in resistance, to activate in civic participation, to engage in the democratic process, uh, to go and vote, to register voters, to run for office, to mobilize, to join marches, to raise your voice. And this is uh, so exciting for me, and it's something we're trying to do all over the nation because, yes, we have seen a lot of negative things from this president, but the greatness of democracy is that we have also seen amazing uh, examples of responding to this. The courses are going to start when and how people could enroll. We're going to put this online so they can really see everything that is happening in the nation. I'm going to put everything on my Twitter account, which, which is, is? Uh, handle Hesanche, H-E-S-A-N-C-H-E, Hesanche without the C. And I'm going to be promoting all these issues uh, over there in social media. Hector, best of luck and thanks very much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation, Jorge.